Greetings. This talk focuses on the fact that there are five things about the Tesla semi truck that you did not know. Among those items is it's already here and has been in front of you and, and demonstrated for quite a while, but not everyone was aware of it. We'll go through the other four in our talk today. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Bonjour, Strasvice, Ni Hao Ma, uh, French, Russian, Chinese. Today's talk is focused on five things about the Tesla semi truck that you probably didn't know. And I, I may have to refer to my list because friends have been talking about my lack of use of our, um, of our script. So the first thing I wanted to share is the Tesla Semi is here and it's been here for a couple of years. What do I mean by this? Well, it turns out that Mercedes-Benz is using Tesla's drivetrain uh, for electric as well as its batteries, as well as its thermal management system for those batteries in the, uh, in the Tesla, in the Mercedes-Benz truck. So we'll include a photo of that, that operating. And we'll also be including some video that's attached if you want to see that in motion. So everyone is sort of waiting on it's here. And the reality is that uh, the version that Tesla has helped Mercedes-Benz put out is based on the 18650 battery and it's been in test and is now being offered to customers uh, on order for delivery in a year, year and a half and those customers have happily been testing this vehicle. Among them is uh, the biggest buyers of the existing test run has been in Japan at Japan 7-Eleven. The second thing to note that you probably didn't know is that there are two big reasons why it is most companies have not tried to do trucks to this point. The first is that the batteries were too heavy and the second is that uh, is the issue of temperature management. So an example of what I mean by temp temperature management is in the case of Nissan Leaf, at 100,000 miles and four years in, the battery degradation that's experienced from users is as high as 30 or 40 percent worth of the battery. So the vehicle only be able to get 30 or so miles because they start with 73 miles, it basically renders the vehicle non-useful. The reason for this is that it turns out that uh, not only do you need a battery and you also need a thermal management system. In the case of the LEAF, they're using a pouch. And the pouch problem is that it doesn't control heat very well. They're putting a fan across those battery packs and because those cells are so large, it's difficult for the cooling effect to get to all the batteries. So why does this have anything to do with the trucks? Because when you scale up to uh, a truck battery, let's say in a semi truck, and you're talking four or five battery packs that would normally be in a sedan, a problem pops up, which is how do you manage the heat that's generated by all those batteries operating? And in the case of the pouch process, which is a cheaper way to go, the cells are too large for you to be able to put cooling into those uh, cells to control the heat impact of that situation. So, I, so item number two is the fact that there's always a huge discussion about which battery is being used and which manufacturers are competing with those batteries to get this truck product done. The bigger challenge, though, for everyone, including Tesla, is how do you deal with the heat that's generated by the fast movement of cells into and out of the battery pack? And when that battery pack gets huge, the amount of work that it takes to get this dealt with is even more pronounced. 
So number two in this case is um, that in the truck space, how heat is managed becomes even more important in the car space because you're tar talking such large packs given the number of cells being used. The third item in our list focuses on the fact that Tesla has, if you will, ceded the 100 mile range zone for trucks to partners slash competitors. So Cummins is talking about a 100 mile range truck as well as you have the same discussion going on from for Mercedes. Because Tesla is producing the batteries for these partners, particularly Mercedes in this case, and uh, they're using their thermal management system and drivetrain for that vehicle, there's really no need for Tesla to have a product in the 100 mile range. The other issue regarding the 100 mile range is that Tesla is really focused on the semi truck and the only battery that's viable for that length is the 2170 for two reasons. Number one is that uh, the power to weight ratio and you know, the, the 2170 battery um, is half the amount of weight of a similar powered 18650 battery. So as a result one of the issues that large trucks have had over long distances is how can you go 300 miles if the batteries you're carrying equal, uh, equal the amount of freight or, or too much of the freight? So hence, most have avoided trying to pull off a semi or 80,000 pound solution because the weight of the batteries was too heavy. And in the case of the 2170, not only do you get the benefit um, of a weight uh, amount that makes it profitable to ship freight uh, on electric, you also get the benefit of it's a lower cost of battery along with being lighter. So the 2170 um, makes it the metrics that a, uh, a shipper might use to determine which vehicles or to use isn't affected by uh, amount of freight considerations or cost consideration because the new 2170 at scale is such an efficient battery. On the why Tesla is doing it front, Elon Musk explained that there was a sense that there was a lot more interest in doing a class 8 vehicle as well because it's how 70% of freight is shipped and the pollution effect on diesel engines at that size is far greater than any other vehicle in terms of impacting uh, the, the global health and environment. The fifth thing to note about the trucks that you may not be aware of is what I call the zany announcements that are coming out of Tesla regarding all products including the truck. So what do I mean by zany? So for example Elon Musk explained that it would be a Model 3, uh, both engine and battery configurations that are used to produce the truck. Four weeks ago, it was announced by J.B. Strobel, the chief technical officer, that in fact the new uh, truck would be the equivalent of the output of four um, Model X, uh, or sorry, four Model S both engine and powertrains. And this is kind of zany because Tesla recently entered, recently meaning two or three years ago, decided to switch to an open patent situation. So Tesla is actually consulting other companies in the auto business that are trying to do electric as a way to increase the number of firms that are able to compete in the area. While doing this, Tesla had made a decision on how they were going to handle their patents or not. And one of the methods that they're using is that there's some of the technology they own and have developed that they're not patenting as a way to um, make it more difficult for people to figure out what it is because you can't look at the patent application to turn, determine it. But you also have the issue of how does Tesla still make money even though 
they're helping competitors to compete with them. And the simple answer to it is this, which is, I want to call it zany announcements that um, don't reflect logic, given how logical the company Tesla is. So as a result, you have really smart people sort of making dumb statements that are really designed to allow them to maintain their success run and make money on behalf of shareholders, but at the same time help to boost the number of people that are doing what they do, which in the end game is it's going to be a win-win where both shareholders and the environment benefit from the experience. So I, I thought that these were sort of an interesting five things you may not know. I'm also intrigued because everyone's still waiting for the truck to be introduced. And I thought that the biggest element of this discussion was that how can you wait for a truck to be introduced when all the people involved know that they already have introduced uh, the, the truck via Mercedes, even though Mercedes doesn't want to admit that this is what's going on. So the, the press and everyone else can reference the fact that Tesla has been beat to market by competitors, et cetera, et cetera. But even in the case of Cummins Engine, where they introduced their truck, it's one thing to introduce the truck. It's another thing to have it actually working on customer sites already, which is the case for Tesla in their partnership Mercedes, as well as the Tesla Mule with which photos have come out. So I think these are all sort of valid and useful information points relative to where we're at with the Tesla truck. Look forward to introducing more in this area over time. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, macht's gut, au revoir, Heathrow, Choda Hafez. And please like and subscribe. Your support is always appreciated. Any questions, appreciated.